The first part is measurement. Uh, so how do we measure time? Uh, the device is a watch or a clock and the units is uh, seconds or minutes. Uh, so, um, for example, if you, you have to know that a minute is 60 seconds, so if you have 2 minutes 50 seconds, uh, it is equivalent to 170 seconds. That's pretty easy, I think. Uh, then now we come to measuring volume. So, uh, it's two parts. If you want to uh, find the volume of a gas, so use the graduated syringe and the unit is centimeter cube. As you can see here, here is a metal uh, reacting with hydrochloric acid and they give out hydrogen gas. And so uh, the hydrogen gas pushes the syringe out and so um, you, read the, uh, you read the volume of the gas from the graduated gas syringe. Okay, and the, the reaction between metals and acids will be discussed in uh, future chapters. Now, if you want to measure the volume of a liquid, you have to ask yourself a question. You want to trough an exact volume or do you want an exact volume? If your answer is rough, and so the device that you must be using is a measuring cylinder and the unit is centimeter cube. Of course, it's graduated. Um, the second thing, if you want to measure an ex exact volume, um, also, there are two scenarios. Do you want a whole number volume or a volume with decimals? If you want a whole number volume, then use a bibet, uh, which is here. And uh, the unit, of course, is centimeter cube. If you want a volume with decimal, use a burette. Of course, that means it's more accurate because it gives you out the volume in decimals. And the unit is centimeter cube. Now, a thing to bear in mind is that both the burette and the bibette are used to measure... Um, let me get the highlighter, uh, are, are used to measure uh, discharged volumes of liquids, which means if you put here a 50 centimeter cube of, um, of water and then you open the tap and allow uh, the water to flow and then you stop it at a certain point, um, the reading here that you will, uh, I'm sorry, um, the reading here that you will take, um, the reading here that you will take is that of the liquid that was discharged. Okay, so now next, if you want to measure a mass, as we all know, use a balance. It is precise, of course, it gives you it in decimal. That's the electronic balance, and it's usually available in all labs. And the unit is grams. Now, what if you want to measure temperature? You go for the thermometer, and the unit is uh, degree Celsius. Now, here, as you can see in the thermometer, there is uh, Fahrenheit. We won't be using Fahrenheit uh, much. Um, in our course, uh, we will only be using a uh, degree Celsius, mostly. Okay, so now we'll go to a really important part of chapter number two, and that's uh, paper chromatography. So what's paper chromatography? Um, it's a method to investigate, that is separate and identify, a colored or a colorless solute depending on their, uh, depending on what? On their solubility. Uh, in suitable solvents, okay? So um, here is uh, the diagram of a simple uh, chroma uh, chromatography process. So we have the beaker, and then we have here, in this case, uh, the solvent is water. Uh, the solute, in this case, is an ink spot, and you put the ink spot in the baseline. And this is the paper, and you have here a piece of pin, uh, wood and a pin uh, to hold the paper. So uh, what you will observe, uh, let's skip this part of the precautions and read what if um, and read the observation. If we have a chromatography to investigate, if we're carrying out chromatography to investigate solutes in a black ink, what will happen is the water, uh, the water will get soaked up and the solutes in the ink will dissolve and the solutes will absorb on the paper, forming a clear chromatogram. Again, I want to really highlight the word absorb because absorb is opposite is not the same as absorb. Uh, absorb. absorb it means um, like um, it holds on to the surface. Uh, a thin a thin layer or a thin molecule of the solute holds on to the surface. Okay, so that's the observation that you have when you carry out chromatography. Now, a few things. The most soluble solute, of course, um, is expected to travel the most distance because it's the most soluble. And uh, an insoluble solute, a completely insoluble one, will remain on the starting line or uh, the baseline. Now, a few precautions that you need to put in mind when carrying chromatography. 
the baseline should be in pencil and not in ink this baseline because graphite which is pencil made of is insoluble in all solvents number two uh, have a concentrated drop of the solution on the baseline in order for you to have a clear chromatogram the more concentrated it is the more um, clear the chromatogram is and the more uh, you're able to uh, um, determine the relations between uh, the solubility of the different solutes Number three, the level of the solvent should be below the baseline. Why? Because it will prevent the solutes from dissolving in the solvent. You don't want to have the, the solvent here and then it dissolves the whole thing and nothing uh, gets, uh, nothing travels up. Okay, number four, if the solvent is a volatile liquid, and as we said, a volatile liquid is a liquid that changes into a gas, you better keep the, uh, the beaker covered just for you to reduce the evaporation of the um, of the solvent okay just uh, already have a lid but just in case uh, um, if you don't have just put it uh, especially if it's a volatile liquid uh, when the solvent reaches the top um, of course you just remove the paper and try to indicate the relation in the solubilities of the different solutes so what do you expect the yellow to be the yellow um, as we just said is because it traveled the most okay Let's get a clear, uh, more clear color. So this is the uh, most soluble. This is the most soluble. As we said, the one that travels the most is the most soluble. Okay. Um, and this gray one, I think here is, uh, I think it's insoluble because it didn't travel. It remained on the uh, base line. Okay, um, Okay. what are some of the uses of chromatography? It's used to analyze colors in forged banknotes, so it really has some uh, real-life uh, real uses. And you can analyze the colors in a colored cloth, you can analyze the colors in an apricot or a skin of apples or oranges or lemon. So uh, chromatography is really one of these uh, useful things. So I think I'm going to end the video here. And so this was part one of chapter number two. Um, as I say, uh, um, at the end of each video, if, if you have any question, just um, uh, post it below in the comment section. I'll try to answer it myself or ma uh, maybe another students uh, whom are watching the video as well uh, might help out. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.